Hey, it's Mike here, and today we finally have a study looking directly at the acid reflux rates of vegans versus people that eat meat. This has a ton of implications for society due to the massive economic footprint of GERD or gastroesophageal reflux disease. And of course, I just need to further debunk Scientologist chiropractor Eric Berg, who says, you know, one of the things you should do to fight GERD is just quit being vegan. When someone's a vegan, many times, they consume a lot of grains and a lot of foods that tear up their digestive system. And they don't consume a lot of animal fats. Probably would be his answer to stubbing your toe, but let's just get right into it. First of all, some background on GERD. It is very common in the US. From this paper in the US, the direct cost of managing GERD exceeds $12 billion. If you grew up on cable TV like me, you know that it's almost every commercial break, there is an acid reflux related commercial. Oh. I can't sleep, honey. Uh -huh. What's the matter? Oh, heartburn. Like I know so much about Tums, yet I've never had the need to use it. And while some people do have mechanical causes of GERD, like a hiatal hernia, where essentially, you know, your stomach comes up a little bit into your esophagus, there's obviously a dietary connection and you don't have to look to crazy vegan resources <laughs> to be told that. I mean, to Johns Hopkins Medicine. What foods help or hurt? Yeah, the ones that hurt, you know, we have various processed foods, but also a lot are cheese, fatty meats, bacon, and sausage. But all the foods that they say help GERD are plant-based over and over again with the exception of milk. And even then they say that, quote, the fat in milk can aggravate acid reflux, end quote. And yeah, back in September of last year, I responded to Eric Berg's video, you know, essentially saying it was mucus that is related to GERD and that low acid myth that causes GERD, as well as a bunch of other bogus claims like how you should be eating meat and dodging being vegan as well. And back then, really the only research I had to work at was the scores of studies showing that higher vegetable, you know, plant-based consumption is associated with lower GERD and then that higher meat consumption is associated with higher GERD. I would go further and even say that higher processed meat from this study was associated with 4.67 times the odds of having GERD, which is an insane <laughs> ratio. He also mentions that grains like directly cause GERD for just total bogus reasons like they don't have enough nutrients, but let's just get to the main study. This one, a slap in the face to Eric Berg is an Italian study hot off the press from earlier November, 2023. You know, it was a survey based study, though it was a more in-depth survey. It tried to get 4,000 people's information, but it got full survey results from over a thousand. And that was quite powerful enough to come up with statistically significant findings because their result was that yes, those vegans had a 53% low lower rate of GERD compared to the omnivores and that p-value was p.006, which is a lot better than the p.05 that we generally are looking for. And yes, they did glean enough information from those surveys to actually adjust for things like age and BMI, which are generally really important. For example, as you get older, you know, your chance of a hiatal hernia just from lack of muscle stability goes up. And then people who are very obese can have pressure that's literally physically pushing back up on their throat and uh, leading to acid reflux that way. However, in this, Italian population, obesity does not seem to be super related here. You know, it was only like 7% increased risk for people who have a high BMI and heck, even that GERD group had an average BMI of 24, which is not even overweight and also not that different from the other groups of BMI. And the only other factor that had as powerful a relationship with GERD was smoking. You know, people who smoked had twice the rate of GERD, and this is a lot of causal potential mechanisms here as this study covers. But people who aren't vegan versus vegans have twice the risk of GERD. People who smoke versus people who don't smoke have twice the risk of GERD. The relationship is that powerful. And while this study is far from being able to determine causality as you know just an epidemiological study and a survey, it does fit into that bigger picture of again, what foods are promoting GERD and what foods are 
making GERD not as bad. Is there a causal relationship here, though? Well, this other Italian study with some of the same researchers as well as others compared the acid response of plant versus animal foods in heartburn patients. And the foods they compared weren't even the worst animal product contenders. I mean, baked cod as well as chicken. But then for plants, they did straight seitan, which you think would do it. Well, the results, the animal protein had over three times the throat acid exposure time as the plant protein. An animal protein had twice the acid reflux events, twice the symptoms, experimentally backed up. Well, that might just have to do, you know, plant-based foods have more fiber, they have more water, they're less inflammatory. All of these, you know, high fat, high protein animal foods could you know, increase the amount of acid your stomach needs to produce, you know, perhaps to an unnatural amount. You know, did the human body evolve to slam down a ton of fat and protein at every single meal, much more than we actually need to sustain ourselves? You know, probably not. And that survey aspect is the main limitation of the study. You know, what were these people on the survey thinking when they answered the question? You know, in terms of bias, were vegan people trying to look better? We don't know for sure. But I did think it was funny they were able to figure out know, what type of person was more likely to finish the whole survey. And one of those types of people were people that were non-alcohol consumers. You can just imagine alcohol consumers drinking and getting more and more drunk during the survey and having to just give up. <laughs> but continuing on the topic of bias, you know, was this funded by the Vegetarian Society? No, it says it didn't have external funding. Surveys are cheap. But it is worth mentioning that there is a connection here to the Scientific Society for Vegetarian Nutrition in Venice, Italy. That's for one of the authors, but then I could say another author recently did a paper on how bovine or cow colostrum is a promising ingredient. So very not vegan view here. It could be argued as biased against <laughs> veganism. And if this was a study showing how healthy meat or something is, I would have to look at, you know, for example, how the original data stacks up to the adjusted data, as I generally do. And in this case, our unadjusted data is still about half the odds of GERD for vegans. So that's looking good there. And then it's also good that the scientists say that the data can be made available to anybody that asks for it. So you could double check the data if you wanted to. In the end, if you wanna know more details about mechanisms of GERD, I do have my more in-depth video from last year that I will link below and at the end. But as far as Eric Berg goes, it appears that he once again crashed his ship into a GERD Berg and is now just becoming even more and more wrong about GERD and you know, what causes it and his advice to stop being vegan. You know, half the rate of acid reflux is wildly lower in terms of a disease comparison. Anyway, you can let me know down below what you think about all of this. And as usual, feel free to like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Far from being able to determine causality. Causality. Causality.